as the world's second largest emitter of greenhouse gases, the U.S. has to lead. We have enormous responsibilities. Former President Obama fires up young climate activists with some advice on activism while vowing that the U.S. is back in the fight in today's Top 5. Welcome to Know This COP26 edition. I'm Alejandro Alba in Glasgow, kicking off week two of the climate conference. Let's count down and get to the biggest stories you need to know. Starting at number five, want to really make a statement about the rising seawater crisis? Take it from the leader of the Pacific Island of Tuvala. Tuvala's Foreign Minister Simon Kofi delivered a climate speech to COP26, standing knee-deep in the ocean. His goal? To highlight the growing dangers to the vulnerable small island, which is about 2,500 miles southwest of Hawaii. Kofi warns that Tuvala could be underwater by the end of the century if global warming isn't dealt with. He adds that people are already leaving and moving to New Zealand. At number four, the massive climate protests at COP26 brought out the angry, concerned, and hopeful voices from around the world. More than 100,000 marchers refused to be silenced in a powerful show of solidarity throughout the streets of Glasgow. We want serial change, not just words. We have to think of the future generation. We can't be selfish. We've caused all this, so we have to remedy it. Marchers were forced to brave nasty winds and freezing cold rain. But they were unstoppable as they made their way through the soaked streets. The Colombian indigenous group Minga Indigena led the way, followed by national trade unions, indigenous leaders from the Amazon, and Black Lives Matter participants. Skepticism is still heavy. It's the most exclusive COP that I attended and partly brought about by vaccine apartheid. We know for a fact that those countries, developing countries, this is a double whammy because they could not raise their voice here. But there is also hope. There's a lot of positive talk, but the real change that we need is actual action. When we start to treat it as an emergency, we'll start to make some progress. Number three, health activists are sounding off in Glasgow, urging world leaders to focus more on the health benefits of climate action. The climate crisis is the greatest threat to global health that we have seen literally ever, and it's going to result in not only deaths from like heat waves and fires, but also an increased risk of pandemics. We spoke to medical students and young doctors who worry there's a disconnect between the fight to reduce global warming and the dire consequences it will have on human health. I don't think people realize how much the climate crisis is going to impact our health. Every organ system in your body is going to be impacted by climate change. To back them up, a recent UN report found that there is no region of the world any more immune than another to the harsh impacts of climate change. It suggests that the next generation of health professionals be equipped to deal with climate-sensitive diseases. At number two, the catastrophic consequences of climate change are already here, and representatives from heart-hit nations are demanding compensation. But most wealthy nations are resisting any measure to hold themselves accountable for the harm caused on more vulnerable nations. Jorge Perez Rubio of the Inter-Ethnic Association for the Development of the Peruvian Rainforest believes part of that compensation includes letting indigenous communities supervise the funding, not government officials. Perez Rubio says another huge step would be to provide more protection for the people on the front lines, trying to protect the jungle. And at number one, President Obama apologized for the Trump years, but said the U.S. is ready to make up for lost time in the fight against climate change. Despite four years of active hostility toward climate science, coming from the very top of our federal government, the American people managed to still meet our original commitment under the Paris Agreement. It was Obama who helped seal the Paris Climate Agreement six years ago, only to have Trump pull the U.S. out of it. But Obama says those lost years are no reason to lose faith, though he admits it's hard not to at times. So Paris showed the world that progress is possible, created a framework, important work was done there and important work has been done here that is the good news now for the bad news we are nowhere near where we need to be yet with most world leaders gone from glasgow obama's high profile appearance is pumping new energy into the cop 26 and while obama praised the youth movement in glasgow he offered some advice on activism I recognize that a lot of young people may be cynical about politics, but the cold hard fact is 
We will not have more ambitious climate plans coming out of governments unless governments feel some pressure from voters. Obama also attended a roundtable climate discussion with students at the University of Strathclyde. That's today's top news. What was the biggest story for you? Tell me in the comments below. And make sure to follow Now This Earth for more COP26 news. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for more news you need to know.